Welcome to Our Town, a 30-minute podcast brought to you by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. It was 1969. Behind a journeyman line, Sonny Jurgensen had been sacked, pounded, beaten, and flattened. But once again, he had passed the Redskins to victory with pinpoint 80% accuracy and for over 400 yards. Coach Lombardi, not renowned for his encomiums, walked to the dressing room and he said this to the press. Sonny Jurgensen is a great quarterback. He may be the greatest this league has ever seen. He's certainly the best that I have ever seen. He hangs in there in the worst of adversity. He's no longer a young man, but he's all man. He will surely be in the Hall of Fame. This is Andy Ockershausen, and this is Our Town. And one of the legends of our town, who didn't start out in our town, but it sure made it big, is Adolf Christian Sonny Jurgensen. And I love the name Adolf. Sonny is 50 years in Washington. He came in 1964, it's 52 years. He's a lifelong redskin. That's amazing, Sonny. 50 years went quick, didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> 50 years. Ten. And I've been doing the radio broadcast since 81. That is correct. A lot and of years. And they played uh, and 20 years as a player, active player. But, you know, all those great years, Sonny, uh, we, we talk about it at every chance we get. The great Super Bowls that you attended as, as a WMAL personality, they were in five Super Bowls. You missed one. I know they sat you up in the stands at um, Los Angeles. Right. Uh, George Allen. George Allen didn't want me to be on the bench. I was on crutches. I'll never forget standing on the sidelines. The Coliseum, right? Los the Angeles. Coliseum. And uh, I walked by, they were playing the Miami Dolphins, and I walked by Don Shula was standing there. The coach of the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins coach. And he said, Sonny, I'm sorry you're not going to play in this game. He said, it would be a better game <laughs> if you could uh, be in it. He said, but uh, I know how hard you work to get here. And uh, I said, nope can't do it <laughs> so they put me up in a booth i remember that way 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 up in the bow way up top it was jack ken cook's box he didn't want any distractions right george that's right and uh, i could have helped billy I, I really could have because they were i'll never forget how they played defense that day and they waited for larry brown to cut back and yeah they had him well, well they, they defensed us well yeah. i'm fascinated and, and know a lot about uh your history and your background growing up in Wilmington, North Carolina, played all sports in high school. And one of the things you told me today that I hadn't heard before, that you were in the ROTC in high school. That's right. We had an ROTC in high school. You had to wear uniforms <laughs> twice a week. And you wore hat and you wear caps and oh, stuff. Oh, caps and everything. Carried guns. Right. But... Uh, carried rifles we learned to clean the rifles and do all of that stuff but uh, we had four companies a b c d i was in d company and uh, we used to march in all the parades in wilmington the azalea parade when we weren't in a parade or anything we would march out drills drills we would drill. go out to this uh, practice field to train and uh it was it was really fun because everybody was involved right. in it, all the players and uh, you know it was a neat. great experience yes it, it helped was. you in later life too it helped you in later life with the national guard experience but also you you i know you talked to me and i heard about your dad who had his own trucking business and you worked with him from time to time even when you were in high school correct well we used to uh hitch rides on the trucks they would haul the uh, Coca-Cola, the Carolina Beach and Rachel Beach, 
but his main business was uh, hauling freight for A and P T company, and he would go up once a week. He would go to Charlotte, two hundred miles, and he would go up to Charlotte and with about 10 trucks. They would fill them all up with f different freight according to what the, the A&P's yeah. ordered back in Wilmington and then uh, t take it back. And it was uh, as a little boy <laughs> to ride up with him. Tag along with Dad. Tag along with Dad. And I will never forget this P.D. River was about halfway in between. And it had a very steep hill on it. When you got there, coming back, you had to go up this hill with all the freight. And my dad would put it in slow gear, and he would stand up and get out on the running board. <laughs> and he would just steer the, the a truck. Big rig, huh? And I said, well, wait a second, what are you doing? <laughs> and he said, if this thing starts backwards, I want to be out of here. <laughs> so daddy knows best. Sonny learned to get out, get out on a running board too, but uh, that was. Uh, and he was a big guy, correct? Big. Yes, he was guy. about six two and a half, about two fifty. He uh, didn't very didn't play football in high school, but he did. Uh, did he go to high school in Wilmington too? Yes, but he wanted to uh, to play, and he wanted me to play. And I, I I played all sports. I know that. It's amazing. All, but I, I, all major sports in high school. Right. We, we didn't have track because we were too isolated in the state. We were down on the beach. But uh, it was, it was uh, strange because one time I came home from football. It was practice was tough. Football was tough in those days. And I said, you know, Dad, I, th I think I'm going to quit football. And he said, yeah. And I said, you know, I like basketball And you better. were very good at it. And I, and I think I can play basketball, and I, I would like to do that. And he said, well, you quit football, you quit eating here, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll play. <laughs> that explained it to you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he just said, you'll quit eating here. And I said, okay, I think I'll play some more. But uh, I did, and I, I got scholarships. You did what he was doing. Right. Well, he came and watched practice. and uh, I bet he did. Well, son, he had to be terribly proud of you. My God. Why did you end up going to Duke when you were a Carolina boy? Everybody told me that, that you're in the state of Carolina. Right. You better go to Carolina. And Wilmington was a Carolina town. But uh, some of the fellows that I had played baseball against, and basketball and everything, had decided that they were going to go to Duke. Leonard Black from Fedville and Buddy Bass from Durham and different guys. And I, I didn't want to get, go to Duke so much, but I, I said, well, if they're going to go there, I think I'll probably go there too. And they said, you're going to have to come home. The people of Wilmington said, <laughs> you're going to have to come home and face these Carolina fans every summer. Oh, Don't you forget it. And I said, okay, I won't forget it. In the four years I was there, I never lost to Carolina. So they never said a word. <laughs> <laughs> they never said a word. Oh, my God. Because we Duke beat them. Didn't lose to any Carolina teams, huh? Nope. Even my we had to play freshman ball then, and even my freshman team we beat Carolina <laughs> badly, forty-eight to something. Well, they made the right choice. That's yeah. that's quite evident and quite obvious. And let's, I'll get back and talk to you a little bit about your days. I want to ask you again that, about your father being a tough guy and a big guy, about some one of his his exploits or something he did that was so impressive. Well, he, he uh, <laughs> you know, they used to move furniture too from house to house to house and and he got involved with different things i mean because they were a transfer company great train, right and uh, he had a one occasion he had to uh, move some overalls and the overalls came in in big bales and uh, some of these guys that were working with him 
they they were having trouble getting it off the truck. And he said they had to move it across a room. Right. But it was a, a warehouse. A warehouse room. And right. they had to take it from one side to the other because they couldn't get the truck in there. And they were trying to figure out how to manhandle it. Right? Yeah, they were trying to figure out how to do it. And he said, "Okay, tell you what to do." He said, "I'm gonna get up next to the truck here, put it on my back." <laughs> 1,100 pounds of overalls, and he walked across the warehouse okay. with the overalls on his back. I couldn't believe that. And they, that was a message to the guys working with him, too, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, it was. <laughs> and you didn't mess with him. <laughs> I believe it. And in the summertime, you worked on the delivery trucks, too, didn't you, with soft drinks and so Oh, yeah. We, uh, used While you were in school. We took... Uh, 2,000 crates of Coca-Cola Wow! to Carolina Beach. And we used to play Far Away Bottle. We would be up on the back of the trucks. And you know, when you turn a Coca-Cola bottle over in the old days, it had a, a city on it. Yeah, where it was made. Where it was made. Right. And on the bottom. And we used to play Far Away Bottles. And uh, <laughs> if you got one from, you know, wherever they made them, you won. <laughs> you know? And it was a good uh, contest, huh? Yeah, it was. It gave sunny. But I had some uh, experiences with uh, driving <clears throat> the Coca Cola trucks. I had uh, two wrecks. <laughs> wow. Were you driving? <laughs> yeah. And I ran off the road one time. We were looking at some girl that was walking down the <laughs> the road, <laughs> and I, we were looking, and I see her, and she, oh, it was awful, and I whipped the wheel, and I run off the road, <laughs> throw off 110 crates of Coca-Cola <laughs> off the side of the road, and I pull into the Coke plant that afternoon <laughs> with one side has got empties on it and the other side's got nothing on it. <laughs> but uh, it's experiences though you remember those things yeah and oh. I had another wreck on a uh, on an open road coming back from Whiteville I went to Whiteville and unloaded 210 crates and brought empties back and coming back it, they call me and they said where are you and I said I'm in Whiteville they said, you're supposed to be in Wallace, North Carolina, instead of White Bull, North Carolina. So I had emptied 210 crates of Coca-Cola in the wrong city. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. <laughs> and so coming, I had to get back to Wilmington, and I was coming down the road, and uh, I come over a hill, and there was a, a horse and buggy. Mm. So I can't go around, so I have to go off to the right of the road, and I pull off to the right, and my front wheel hit the back of the horse and buggy. Oh. <laughs> and had knocked the back wheels off of the thing. So now the horse takes off running with, with no wheels on the thing. <laughs> It's like a sulky almost, huh? Oh, and then they, he <laughs> runs down the road, and they tie him to a tree and everything. But uh, I just... You were just were you in college was, or high school? I was a senior in high school. Everybody, all the kids worked at the Coca-Cola sure. company. In the summertime. Right. That was a big breach company. Well, we're going to take a break here, Sonny. And um, it's Andy Arker's house. This is our town. We're talking to Sonny Jurgensen about Wilmington, North Carolina. It's a fascinating story. <laughs> Now we'll be back and talk about your athletic career in North Carolina. Hi, Tony Sybil here to tell everybody about our wonderful restaurants at Washington Harbor. Tony and Joe's, the best seafood in the city. Nick's Riverside Grill, wonderful chops and steaks. Wonderful views of the Kennedy Center, Roosevelt Island, Roslyn Skyline. Spectacular. Two bars outside, right on the water. Fabulous food. For dinner reservations, call 202-944-4545. It's really a great experience. We'll see you down at Tony and Joe's or Nick's Riverside Grill. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. Vince Lombardi was right on all counts. 
I believe that Sonny's the best quarterback the NFL has ever seen. A more intelligent, courageous leader, a more dedicated competitor, a more talented performer would be impossible to find. What a record. For five years, he led the National Football League in passing. For five years, he passed for over 3,000 yards. 25 times he passed over 300 yards in one game, and five times he passed for over 400 yards, a record never equaled. I shall never forget the day that he reported to the Redskins. It was Hallelujah Day in Washington, and Coach Pill McPeak said, we've obtained a quarterback today with superb passing skills the perfect temperament to maintain poise in the face of adversity, the hallmark of leadership, intelligence off the field, and indomitable determination. Sonny has all this and then some. And for 10 years, he showed Washington all this and then some. There are Jurgensen vignettes that stand in my mind as a clear color motion picture. That cold gray day in November at RFK trailing Dallas 31 to 20 with 90 seconds to go and like Merlin the magician he waved the wand and led the Redskins to an impossible 34-31 victory. This is uh, our town talking with the legendary Sonny Jurgensen. He's not a legendary to us because you know him so well. He was a big part of WML at one time when he retired. But I'm talking to him about his days in Wilmington and his family and things that most of you people don't know about. His dad, and we talked about him, and let's talk about his mother. I know that I met his mother, Lola, here in Washington or in, in Alexandria, and she had a great influence on his life, as mothers do. Well, she did, with my dad traveling you know, to Charlotte and, and back, and he was gone part of the time. So uh, one night when he would come home, he was very tired, and I wanted to play catch. And so I used to play catch with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> You're an all-star receiver. Yeah. I used to play catch with her. So I learned, th I, I always kidded her. I said, you taught me how to throw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> how about your sister? Was she was athletic too? No, she wasn't. But uh, she was a, a great influence because she was a good student. Really? That helped you. She was a good well, student. you were a good student, too, no. so let's not hide that. Well, but she, she, she good was genes. a good student. and uh, I met your sister and, and your grand and your sons. I know all four of your boys. And um, that's amazing. You got my four sons. And I live with my aunt. My aunt lived with us. In Wilmington? She was a tennis player. Wow. And she was a very good tennis player. And I used to go out and hit balls with her occasionally. And uh, I ended up, uh, we were coming home one day and by high school and I saw this, all these people over there. And there was a uh, tennis tournament going on. And I walked over and I said, God, this, is, this looks like fun. I think I'll enter. <laughs> I got in and won the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Auntie uh, knows best. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh my God, but she, she was good. She was good tennis player. She got a call one day from some guy that uh, I didn't know. Doctor Eden was his name, and he said, "Would you come by and hit balls?" He knew she had played tennis and was ranked in the state, and said, "Would you come by and hit some balls?" I can't find anybody, and she said, "Yeah." Althea Gibson. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Althea Gibson. What a great experience. Yes. My God. World champion, Wimbledon. She yeah. won everything. Oh, yeah. Great. She died just recently. I remember uh, seeing that in the paper, Sonny. But uh, Mary went over and hit balls for the... In all of your athletic accomplishments, you had a wonderful childhood in Wilmington. And, yeah, and you grew up did. with a great life and learned a lot of things. And then you, your ROTC led to you, at one time, joining the National Guard, as we all did. Well, I, to stay out of the service, 
That's what I was trying to do. But I was trying to get in the national, the naval ROTC at Duke and couldn't get in because of teeth or something. But I, I joined the National Guard with some of the basketball players and football players, too. And everybody, that was one of the modes at that time, getting in the National Guard. And we used to meet on the weekends at the Armory. And, uh, and drill and drills, and you sit there. Got one night we were there drilling one time and uh, cleaning weapons and so forth. And Fats Domino was playing in the uh, <laughs> in the armory that night, so we got to see him. Fats Domino. Oh Fats Domino. <laughs> Fats was great. Oh You're my right. God, what an artist! But we went to you know we would go to uh, Fort Bragg. The firing range. One time we went to Fort McClellan, Alabama to uh, go down there for a long weekend, a week or so. A true guardsman. Uh, yeah. We, you, we, we had to go do all this stuff, and uh, we were, you know. That was both high school and college. But in your athletic career, you started in high school, of course, and worked your way up. And I know that I've heard the story many times. But you were particularly good at basketball. Yes. <clears throat> Wasn't one of your coaches named Ace Parker a, a, a baseball legend? He was a baseball legend. And a but great he, football he, player, too. Great football player. At Duke, he was uh, my backfield coach. He could out punt and throw the ball better than anybody on the team. But uh, I think he's in the Hall of Fame in baseball and football. Oh, I know. It's amazing. But did he discourage you from the basketball, or did the coach discourage you? The coach did. <laughs> Bill Murray did. He he was the uh, – I told you I went to Duke because of some of the basketball players, Bucky Allen and people like that. You grew up with them. Jackie Murdoch went to North Carolina – I mean, Wake Forest and – I'd played against them in and, and, uh, high school. High school. And I, I wanted to p play basketball. And uh, Bill Bradley was a basketball coach, and he wanted me to come out because I had played with these some of these guys. In high school, right? In high school. And the reason he didn't, he, he sent somebody to ask me to come out. You know who that guy was? Lefty Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> and Lefty said... I didn't want you to come out. You'd take my place. <laughs> <laughs> and he, That's a great story. He, he, he was, cured you. He, he cured me of it right, right away. <laughs> but uh, Lefty was a sixth man on the basketball team. <laughs> and, uh, but I used to practice with them. I'd go right. down and, and work out with them and everything. That was fun. Even when you were playing football, they allowed that, right? Well, <laughs> they didn't so much allow it, but uh, we used to play at nighttime with Dick Grote. Dick, oh, Dick Grote was an all-American basketball player and baseball great, great, player. Great pro, too. Played with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Is it short yeah, was it shortstop? Shortstop, exactly right. Was yeah. he from North Carolina? No. I think he was from Pennsylvania. But he came down to school down there, huh? Yes, he did. Great school. Sonny, um, well, some of that, and you went to school with the uh, the wife of Bob Dole, Libby Dole. She was in your class at, yes. the, at the Duke. <laughs> I went out with her once. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, she talked politics, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't want to hang around with her too much. But uh, one of the guys I lived with during the summer was uh, Dave Syme. Ah, uh, he was ophthalmologist, right? One of the greatest in the East. But a great, great runner. Oh, wasn't he a super? He was. Uh, he ran a nine three hundred at Duke. Which was lightning. Oh, yeah. He ran a 20 flat 220. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what that, I'd read about it until I read about Dave Simon. He was an eye guy. And I just did some eye, had some eye work. I was an ophthalmologist, so I knew what they were. But he was world world class surgeon, too, was he not? Yes, he was. He, uh, in Miami? he uh, went to Miami. He put glasses on uh, Bob Greasy. He did? Yeah. <laughs> He had uh, a 220 run in the uh, Olympic trials. He pulled a muscle and, and couldn't. And, he didn't make the final. He didn't make That's the final. That's grueling. Very. Because he, everything at Duke, he ran in a straight line. They had a 220. And, and he could go all the way. 
go all the way. He didn't have to turn, and he had to turn it in some of these other. And he wasn't he wasn't ready for it. He wasn't ready for it. But he he didn't do any other sports but track, right? He, baseball. Oh, did he play baseball? He, he had baseball? a chance to sign in baseball, for sixty-five thousand with the Chicago White Sox. He was a great baseball player. He was wow. a center fielder and could run down any, <laughs> any ball that you hit. What a great athlete! I know. Oh that. yes, he was world class. Well, so were you for all those years, and I know the great story of that. Um, and then maybe your your fans probably know or don't know. They listening to our show, they're going to hear it that you scored 50 points in a basketball game one night and nobody knew it. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, that happened. No, I went to, we were playing, and my, my team froze me out. <laughs> they didn't want me to score any more points. <laughs> I played, but we had the... Uh, Philadelphia? In Philadelphia, we had a, a basketball team. Pretty good basketball players. Timmy good, Brown, good player, Tommy but... McDonald, Clarence Peaks here. We had some good players on there. And one night, we were playing in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And in Hershey, we played preliminary games to the Philadelphia Warriors. So we were pl they were playing the second game against the New York Knicks. We played the first game and came back out and sat down and watched. Who was your opponent in the first game? Baltimore Colts. Aha, uh -huh, the Baltimore Colts basketball team, of course. Right. And... Uh, Gino, Gino, Pellington, oh yeah. But we came out and watched the second game, and that was the night Wilt Chamberlain got 100 points, <laughs> <laughs> and we got to see it. <laughs> and they didn't, they didn't talk about your 50 points. 50, I didn't get that, nothing. <laughs> he lost the 50 points, Brent. <laughs> well, we're going to take another break here, Sonny, and come back, and I want to talk to you about further about your... Uh, non-football career because <laughs> that's very interesting mm -hmm. about the basketball and why you didn't pursue uh, basketball obviously the coaches didn't want you to and um, some other things about your stellar career and we'll be right back here on our town are you retired or soon will be is your will up to date don't want to leave a mess for your family to clean up I'm attorney Mike Collins, the guy who sends you those invitations to my estate planning seminar. I'll teach you how to save taxes, avoid probate, protect your heirs from lawsuits, bankruptcy, even the divorce court. Keep your money and your family with our innovative Reservoir Trust. Watch the mail for your invitation. Tuition's free when you register online at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Against the giant, down by ten. With two minutes to go, he hobbled into the game with a bad leg, leg, patted Billy Kilmer on the backside, who hobbled out of the game with a bad leg, and then completed 11 straight passes for an impossible victory. It was Phoenix coming up out of the ashes. It was Lazarus rising from the dead. That's what Sonny Jurgensen could do to a team. Sandy Ockers out again, our town. We're chatting with... Number nine, the redhead. He got many different names, but <laughs> one of them that that uh, sticks with me is a prolific football player and a great a great student of the game. I mean, he was more than just a a player. He understood the game and does to this day, and has been doing color on the Redskins since he started in 1981 at WMAL, doing the color with the three the the the, the trio is like the Nairobi trio. I call them. Sonny, Sam, and Frank. That's right. And the Redskins have not won a championship since they left WMAL. Hey, let's hear it for that. <laughs> they Sonny remembers. True story. Never been in a championship game since That's they left. That's right. And it's amazing, Sonny. The, the chemistry that we had and that you guys brought to it. You know, Frank was here in town. Frank Herzog. And uh, poor Sam, we don't hear much from him anymore, but... That was a magic day, Sonny, and was great for WML and great for the community because we were a part of a much bigger picture than just a football team. I mean, we did basketball. Big part? We did basketball. Oh, yeah, for WML, right? For WML. We did the Maryland games. Maryland was playing South Carolina. Cold field house. And they couldn't compete with them. So... 
It's when Frank McGuire was at South Carolina. They had ranked teams. And uh, who was the Maryland coach? Lefty. Your pal, <laughs> Lefty. And uh, one of the things about the, this game was that Maryland was going to sit, play zone, and Frank McGuire came down the court and just stopped. He just they just held the ball. They didn't shoot. <laughs> It was like six to five at halftime. <laughs> it it ended up thirty to yeah, there's twenty eight or points. something. But, the but we had nothing, nothing. But we had nothing to do. I was doing it with Steve Gilmartin. <laughs> we had nothing to do in the the game, so I said we started reciting things. To fill an air time. <laughs> to fill the air. I did the prologue to the Canterbury Tales in Old English. One that a prula with a sure suta, the doof of march had pursued to the ruta, and bothered every vein of switch liqueur, of which virtue engendered is a fluor. And Steve did one about the. Uh, Cad, Bill Cad. of Rights or something he's doing something. <laughs> and we got more comments Absolutely. about that. St. Stephen's School, the guy called me up and asked me to come over and say it for his <laughs> class. <laughs> we, How about that? We said it wasn't it for, sleepy. Yeah. No, but we said it for, I had to say it for this class and <laughs> his English class and I'm going what in the world have we done here? We created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> this has been such an interesting discussion. We're running out of time. But we'll continue talking to Sonny Jurgensen in the next episode of Our Town. You've been listening to Our Town Season 1 with your host, Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town podcast episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. We welcome your comments and suggestions on how you like the show or who you'd like to hear from next. Catch us on Facebook at Our Town DC or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C. for hosting our podcasts.